The highest rate of inflation in recent times was witnessed last month, with the cost of commodities in the country going up just a few months to the next general election. And while the Jubilee administration is keen to highlight achievements made towards realizing its economic agenda, our reporter Timothy Etienne found out that Kenyans may be reading from a different script. Tonight, he tells us why on our continuing series on the State of the Nation address that is just three days away. We meet Gladys Mogushe on her way back to her shop after dropping off her two children to school after their lunch break. Gladys, a mother of three, is just one among many here in the country's largest slum who are falling victim to the nation's biting economy. <laughs> Just two weeks ago, the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics revealed that the country witnessed an inflation rate increase of 9.04% from 6.99% in January, the highest ever in recent times. When inflation occurs in an economy, there are many people who suffer. For example, you are the consumer. Now with 100 shillings, you go to the supermarket, you buy less goods. If you're a pensioner and what you're getting is fixed, you, 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 your lifestyle goes down. If you're a salaried person, you got a fixed amount of money you're earning and the price of things are going up, it means that in actual terms, you're poorer than before. So inflation creates poverty. In 2013, the Jubilee administration swept into power on the promise of ensuring that the price of basic commodities would remain affordable for all Kenyans. Gladys says that promise has largely remained a mirage to this day. For her, the most basic of household commodities, such as the price of maize flour, which has shot up to between 120 to 150 shillings, has forced many here to change the menus on their table. <laughs> Indeed, that trend has swept across most of this area. Many residents have abandoned the consumption of ugali, instead choosing to dine on much cheaper foodstuffs such as rice or chapati. The brunt of the high cost of living is being felt in such restaurants deep in the heart of Kibra slums where such a meal of chapati madondo goes for a mere 50 shillings affordable to most residents here. Mchano hizi kula ugali. Ndio za nyingine pesa yenye kwa naye hizi tosha ugali kwa sababu ugali unga imepanda. Na vile unga imepanda tunaona unga ya chapati ndio iko chini na ndio chapati ndio naona inapikwa kwa wingi hapa. Hii ndio chakula yetu ya mchana. Tunua chapati ya 10 na madondo ya 10 bob. It's a change in lifestyle manifesting from the high cost of living that has seen shopkeepers such as Violet Alo witness reduced sales for an economy boasting of a 6.7% GDP growth last year. We must do our part to drive production in Kenya. And that is why my administration has urged Kenyans to buy Kenyan products. She hopes that come Wednesday, the president will not only speak, but do something about the economy. Gladys shares the same sentiments. Armed with 250 shillings in her pocket, she allowed us to accompany her as she went for shopping. The 250 shillings could only buy a packet each of maize and wheat flour and a sachet of tea leaves. Peugeot Group have signed a contract to begin assembling the well-known Peugeot vehicles 
once again here in Kenya. With the reopening of industries and manufacturing plants, the head of state is likely to factor the growth of enterprise and job in his speech this week. Indeed, the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics records that job creation went up in 2015 for an administration that promised one million jobs annually. But for a majority of Kenyans like Gladys who are yet to feel that growth, the most basic of requirements such as affordability of commodities ranks highest among many if their vote is to count come August the 8th. Timothy Otieno, KTN News.